and um, we welcome uh, to our next guest, uh, Josep Esconti from uh, Novamit, uh, speaking from Barcelona. Welcome, Josep. How are you? You are you're muted. Okay. Hello, hello. How are you? Yeah, Very good. Thank good. you. I am uh, ready to talk about uh, alternative proteins and. Uh, I exactly. think this uh, subject is very connected uh, with the future of uh, the planet and the future of uh, biodiversity. So I will speak about uh, this, which is for me not only uh, what I work at uh, Novamit, but also my, my passion. And I'm very happy to discuss with you about this and happy then that to have you contacting me and uh, trying to talk about the subject even more. So, um, yeah. Pedro, if you like, I can share some uh, images. Go ahead. Uh, and uh, no, I, I don't want to be rude, but I will tell you when you have two minutes left. The floor is yours, Josep. Thank you very much. So I will share the some images with you. Please just confirm if you see it in full screen. Yes, we can see the full screen. All right, very well. So as I said, we're discussing about alternative proteins and uh, what I call the renaissance of biodiversity, because the objective is if we are able to solve this problem through design uh, and manufacturing, then this will be a great uh, step towards uh, the future of uh, humanity on this planet and the rest of the species around us. So I think it's so important, the subject, and I want to do a metaphor uh, to, to make understand what how, how important it is. So um, I think we are, um, this metaphor is about an animal, it's a, a frog, these frogs, are special animals because when you uh, put them in uh, very hot water, they um, they jump right right away uh, from the water because they know it, they are risking uh, uh, of dying, right? But if you increase the temperature um, very fast, is different if you increase the temperature very slowly. And if you increase the temperature very slowly, what happens is that uh, uh, they will not understand and their life will be at risk because uh, they will just, uh, uh, stay in this water and this is what is happening at, uh, at the humanity in our planet uh, when we have this uh, global temperature change and uh, we are not understanding because this is happening uh, in the matter of generations and I think that uh, the lucky part is that uh, we uh, working on food we can do something about that so not only something about the temperature change uh, something about something much bigger not only the climate crisis but uh, what is the biodiversity collapse and I will do an example of how alternative protein can be, in my opinion, the most straightforward way to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. So um, this is connected with both uh, the methane uh, that uh, is uh, produced by the food system, the CO2 con uh, produced by the food system. In this example, now in the video, you see, for example, the Amazon rainforest, which has been uh, destroyed in the last uh, um, 20 years at the, at the pace, which is uh, incredible and uh, this is uh, going to be a disaster so we need to understand what is the main issue right and uh, the main issue of uh, deforestation in um, brazil for example is beef so then the question is what is the second and the third because we should not just uh, uh, try to uh, attack the meat industry right but uh, if you really check the data you see that the beef is much 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 worse than the other products so really if you need to focus on something uh, if you focus on meat and specifically on beef, that is uh, the, the, the most pressing problem. And the same, if you are uh, checking the main drivers of tropical deforestation, the previous uh, graph it was about the annual CO2 emission from deforestation byproduct, right? That's specifically in Brazil. But in this graph, if you talk about uh, the main drivers of tropical deforestation, then beef is number one, and that is 41% of uh, total tropical deforestation. Okay, so th this introduction was just to explain how important it is compared to the others. It's not to say that the others are not important. For example, oil seeds, specifically palm oil, is destroying Borneo and it's a super repressing problem. But uh, the meat industry is really uh, the main driver of this uh, deforestation in all these um, uh, different points of attack in Brazil, in Africa, in Asia, and even in North America and in Europe. And then the second part, uh, it's about how to solve this, right? And uh, I like to solve to try to contribute in, uh, with the design and, uh, and engineering, uh, starting from what is called the biomimetics or biomimicry. So trying to find inspiration in nature. And I started finding inspiration in nature with an animal called axolot, which these animals are incredible because they can regenerate themselves. Why this has something to do 
about trying to solve the problem of uh, meat in this planet is because I've been working a, a one decade on different uh, uh, projects in different universities on trying to imitate. Uh, first, I was working on biomedical applications, so trying to regenerate organs, right? So this one, for example, was a cartilage. We were trying to regenerate. As you see on the right, we were creating bioengineered uh, graphs and tissues that were similar to the native tissue. Or when it comes to collagen bundles, trying to regenerate. Uh, and I was working on bioengineering, but for biomedical purposes. So I was, was using these technologies, very advanced technologies, uh, to um, specifically with by natural polymers. So using the abundant materials in nature to try to uh, create uh, um, grafts for uh, human applications. And I will skip this, but it's just examples to explain that we've been working on different technology, different um, strategies. And at the end, I uh, came into contact with bioprinting. Okay, bioprinting was a technology that I started to use uh, with a small group in, uh, in, in the plan, we started to use this for creating um, artificial tissues and then to regenerate these uh, tissues for human application. And then with um, I had some prototypes and discovered these natural biomaterials. I was able to get the texture and the appearance of some very complex uh, tissue. So I showed this uh, to Ferran Adria. I showed this to Sayer de Carroca, top chefs. And uh, I told them, is this possible to use this technology bioprinting instead of for these biomedical applications, for example, for bone graft, for, um, yeah, I was using this also for cardiovascular stents, et cetera, but can we use this uh, for the main problem we, that I'm mostly concerned of, which is the protein consumption in the planet, because I not only we are seeing this deforestation and this collapse of biodiversity and climate crisis, but we are learning that 50% of total protein consumption in the next four years will come, for example, for a new generation of uh, middle class in China and in India that needs protein, all right? So there is a big problem, but there is going to be an even bigger problem in the next four years, which is uh, completely uh, uh, in, in line what the, with the problems I was explaining before, and it's making it much, much worse, all right? So I decided to apply these technologies, not to uh, biomedicine, but I had the idea to apply this uh, after talking with the super chefs to meet because I did my first prototype, which was not very incredible actually, it was a very, very basic prototype in 2017. And then what was important about my project is that the timing was perfect. It doesn't matter if the team is incredible and the execution is incredible, et cetera, if the timing is not there. So the timing in my case was perfect because it was right, this idea of creating a fibrous uh, whole cuts, okay? So whole cuts uh, meet alternatives, it was the right timing and the same time when the industry, alternative meat industry, was looking to go beyond the burgers. This was already 2018, 19, when it was not just about beyond meat, but then people said, what comes next, right? And so we started creating more advanced prototypes of uh, beef sticks. We created the, the world's most uh, realistic plant-based stick uh, worldwide. And we started with technology which was very similar to what I was using before, so bioprinting, but then we uh, advanced the technology on creating a new um, product, such as uh, this one is uh, the only um, plant-based pork whole cut uh, in the world that we are able to create. And then we have been able to create the largest cell-based uh, whole cut analog in the world with adipose uh, stem cells. So using very similar technology that I was using uh, when I was regenerating organs, so mixing stem cells with plant-based scaffolds. So we created this, uh, the largest uh, uh, cell-based whole cut analog. Um, and then we went beyond 3D printing to create a technology that is scalable, meaning that we've been able to scale at a much, much faster speed. Now we are able to do it at around alpha ton per hour. Instead of one small machine, we are able to uh, use this technology with huge industrial machines and creating uh, new prototypes that are really, really spectacular. In my opinion, I know I am a CEO and founder at Nodamid, but in my opinion, we are uh, the most advanced um, whole cuts in the world. So as you can see, and you can go uh, in some limited launches in restaurants in the next uh, few weeks uh, where we will start to launch this in small scale first, and then in large scale, both beef, as I showed in the last two slides, and the chicken. We started to work with this Frutar, number, now number five best restaurant in the world. And I think that uh, it's completely in line with the start of this conversation when to save the planet, I think it's about transition to renewable energy, uh, try uh, to solve overfishing. So fish alternatives, try to solve, uh, to, to switch towards a plant-based diet. So um, going beyond livestock and all deforestation immediately. 
so that my dream is about uh, in the, some day in the future we have uh, again a balance between nature and rewild uh, the areas of the planet that don't belong uh, to the cities. I think everything is about curiosity, courage, constancy, and confidence. And if you have um, questions, uh, you can just contact me anytime. You can go on novameet.com and find um, an email link so that you can contact me uh, directly in the team. Thank you. Great, great presentation. Thank you very much, Giuseppe. I have a question for you before you leave. Um, uh, many people is reluctant to this uh, new um, um, plant-based or cell-based or printed uh, alter meat or fish alternatives. Uh, what do you think we as food designers could do to overcome these barriers? The mindset, the reluctance. Yes, I think, uh, yeah, regarding the mindset, it's uh, quite easy. It's, we have examples of the of uh, electric cars. You know, electric cars were not very cool, uh, you know, 10 years ago, and until Tesla went from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in less than two seconds. So there was no other way you cannot buy a Bugatti or a Ferrari, two million car to go faster than a Tesla. So when you work with top chefs and you work with design and um, professionally create something that is high quality and even superior to the animal counterpart, if you achieve something with the price parity and superior in the experience, it doesn't need to be a fake meat alternative. It needs to be a, a new thing. So a design uh, with a top chef, we design with the uh, mixing bioengineering, food engineering, biotechnology, material science engineering, combining um, these and creating something which is not going to be, um, we, will, we should be proud of what we do, right? And uh, when you put this in the same shelves at the same price, people would prefer one instead of the other, because for example, you can have a meat alternative with a fat infiltrated within the fibers. I don't think this is impossible because meat uh, is being protected by the lobby for many years, but you know that uh, meat is, uh, you know, there is 100% of uh, uh, hamburgers in the States are um, contaminated with fecal matter. And then uh, uh, for example, um, there is estrogen antibiotics in some, uh, in many countries. And, you know, it's not very difficult to win on meat, especially on, Yes, we could really, really be talking to you, uh, with you for the rest of the event. I know you from a lot <laughs> for a long time, a long time, and uh, you uh, are, you are amazing. Your brain is amazing. Um, so, but uh, yeah, thank you. Happy Food Design Day. I know your uh, startup is, is successful already, and I wish you uh, the best in the coming uh, years. Thank you. Thank Giuseppe, you, Pedro. For being thank you, to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. And now uh, we have...